Welcome, welcome, welcome. And as we head into peak knitting season, especially like warm, snuggly, textury, fantastic, and which to me means cable, um, cable knitting is to make those warm, snuggly sweaters and accessories where, especially if you're giving them as a gift, people think you must be a genius to be able to knit them, um, is that I call you the venerable Nora Gowan is our guest today with this book that is sure to find a place on every single knitter's library. It is the best uh, cable dictionary in the world, and I own them all, <laughs> so I can say that. And uh, and not to mention stunning, stunning patterns that uh, highlight the beauty of cables. And so I'm so glad to have you here, Nora. Welcome back. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, a pleasure to be here. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm such a huge fan. And I have to say that I think the first cable knitting project I ever did, it was a cover project on from Vogue Knitting and it was a crop sweater made out of cabled, I think hexagons or Oh, I know which one you mean. Yeah, 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 you know the one you were, yep. yeah, it was in an off-white, and that's actually when I fell in love with that yarn, yeah. too. But um, I think that was my very first cable knitting project. And, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I totally and completely fell in love with cables, and I have been a huge fan ever since. And I like modern cables on, like, kind of loosely constructed things, and I like tight cables on, you know, sweaters that have 16 kinds of cables on them. And so I am, I am a huge fan of, of cable knitting and a huge fan of yours. And I'm so glad to have you back. I think I was trying to remember if the last time you were here was maybe comfort baby knitting, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Cause I know you were here for knitting <laughs> nature and I think you were here for comfort Afghans maybe. So you know, no. it's all wiped from my memory. Yeah, <laughs> so. I know, but I mean, you've been here. You've been here like four or five times. I will warn you, Tannis Gray is still the official party line queen because I think she's been here like fifteen. So you need to oh. like, get with it, <laughs> That's so, that you can, so you can catch her. You got a lot of work to do to catch up. So, right. um, but I was so so tickled uh, to see this book, and I couldn't wait to get the advanced copy from the publisher. So, so, so tell us about the idea of this book and how, how this came to you to do this kind of a, a project, which, I mean, it's a huge project. Well, the idea actually came about 25 years ago. Oh my. If you guys, if you guys have Melanie Felix knitting in America, you'll see that there's a paragraph all about how I was knitting swatches for 7th Avenue and how I had a box of swatches that I was saving for a book because I couldn't bear to have them just like go away um, and there are complicated legal things about whether you know when you sell it to that company if they then publish it then it's uh, it's open you know open season but if they don't you know there's a contract that said they owned it so I didn't like all that complication and I saved a box of stuff and then of course you know I've been experimenting with cables for years and years and all that knowledge like I wanted to do this book um, like for the last 25 years, but now the time was right. Yeah. And, and where, and like Jeannie says, she's so excited. She loves cables and Patty says she loves cables too. She loves the look. She's like, they're fun to knit, which I agree. And it's kind of a magical thing to just change the order of your stitches and make something so amazing. There's something really magical about creating cables. And that's my husband, by the way, that nobody has ever oh, seen. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, Patty says she's put this on her wish list. I think this book is going to be making it onto a lot of people's holiday wish lists. Um, and I say, don't wait. Just get it for yourself. You deserve it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, this, so it's just, it's really gorgeous. And I think we should just jump right in because yeah. well, that's, that's why everybody's here today, right? So, um so th this book actually, I think, I think today is actually the official release date it of, is. of this book. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's the perfect day to get a private 
tour. Yeah, Shannon says this book is on her wish list too. So yeah, I say everybody get it get it today. Today's the day. It's a special day. So and Nora's here to, to um, talk to you um, about the book. So th the actually there's a uh, the chapter one of this book has a lot of information about um, knitting cables and tips on knitting cables and then it jumps into the um, different kinds of cables and like this kind of open wishbone cable that's on the left there that's one of my favorites for modern sweaters it's just one of it's I just like kind of it's the how that is kind of like loose and flowing and like that kind of to me it reminds me of like the you know, when you break the wishbone on the chicken is really pretty. So how did you decide how to kind of, you know, break this up? In the uh, well, the organization's kind of from smaller to bigger. And I wanted to start with the more basic stuff, like, like it says, the ropes, the braids, and horseshoes. Um, so you'll see like a basic one that's all in stockinette, and then what happens when you change the stitch, whether you make it ribbing or a little mini cable, or like here you can see a little braid in, in the one on the right yeah. within the huge rope. Um, so that's like we start introducing those principles, and then things get larger and larger. You know, there would have been a bunch of ways to organize it, but you have to stick to have to start somewhere. Exactly, and I know um, a lot of the, the a lot of the um, swatches we're going to show people use reverse stockinette as the background to set the cable off. Is oh, all that, of them do. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that your is that your favorite background stitch for doing cables? Um, I think in general, yes. Like I usually put at least a couple of reverse stockinette. I tend to not make a whole sweater in reverse because more people have trouble with their tension and you can see how like two rows will will be together and then there'll be a little gap but I'll have a few stitches of stockinette but in this case in the book all of the swatches are about the same proportion they're like all about five by seven even if they're huge or small or it's a really similar um, proportion so I had to fill that out with reverse stockinette yeah. And then everyone, everyone's loving the little edge stitch. I'm gonna have to do like a blog post on the edge stitch because it's not in the book. It's, it's like a, yeah, it's really yeah. it's a beautiful detail, and I can like see that on the edges of sleeves. And I mean, it's just yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a really I would love that on edges of collars, like the you know right. top over collars and stuff. Well, that, actually, when I think about it now, I did use it on the edge of the flared pullover. So if you like that, take a <gasps> note and and look at the flared pullover. The like back piece has it on it. Oh, great! Yeah, and I like reverse stockinette with my cables. And I know, I mean, I've done sweaters where there's uh, it's seed stitch or moss stitch on the sides of the cables. And that's just so much work. <laughs> so, yeah, it's nice <laughs> when you're doing think, ca cables yeah. to have kind of that, you know, break of... Well, it's two things. It's the break in your knitting, but it also creates, like, really nice valley that makes the cable pop up. Yeah. This is, it's so pretty. Yeah. And Shannon says she did notice the edging and thought it was a beautiful touch. So okay. for people who are coming back and uh, watching this on YouTube, it's in the flared sweater is where you're going to find that. Right. And concept. on the edge of like every single swatch. Yeah. Has that. They all have that uniform. Yeah. It's so pretty. So um, let's do um, some samples. And of course there's a 150 two. different <laughs> 150 150 cables. Over 150. Oh uh, yeah. In the book. And then and I have to say, you know, I'm lucky I get advanced copies. So um you know, I and mostly electronically, so I can carry them around with me wherever I am since I live in more than one place. But the um, I would have bought this book for the Stitch Dictionary and I would have bought this book, a separate book for the patterns. So I kind of feel like this is this is such a bargain <laughs> because, you know, it's really it's two books and I and it's um, it, it's. It's really something amazing. So I think this is gonna. I think this book is gonna go like next to the Barbara Walker books in terms of, you know, around in forty years, people will still be reaching for this well, book. That would be my dream. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I really would like that. 
Well, you know, and I think that's that's how we live forever, right? As long as your book is on one person's shelf, you get to, you get to live forever. It's it's a it's an awesome thing to create something like this. So, and Jeannie just commented. She said the edge um, stitch would be lovely on blankets or scars, scarves, not mm. scars, scarves, and <laughs> um, and and I agree. It's just it's a really nice. Um, finishing edge. So, so here's just a sample of this first section on braids and horseshoes and, um, and, and kind of sort of tell us what the idea is here, if we can maybe go left to right. Sure. So starting on the left, this is a three over three cable. And in the book, you see it next to like the three over three stockinette. But this one is uh, a pearl stitch a twisted knit and a pearl twisted over that same thing, pearl twisted knit pearl. So it's still a three over three cable, but it's made in this twisted knit and that so the twisted knit rib kind of just really pops off the fabric. Yeah. I mean it, it I mean you can see the depth of that stitch and and I mean and when you need something more simple and not quite so big, I think I mean not simple in the fact that it looks like it's simple, but I mean, you, you get a lot of texture out of just a few stitches on that kind of cable. It's re right. really, really pretty. Right. And then the one in the middle, which I just, I just love. I love braided cables. I think they, they remind me of when I had pigtails as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is all stockinette, and it's a braid, like you said. But each leg of that braid is made by uh, moving over twice. So two stitches will move over two, and then the next right side row, they'll move over two again. So it's a flatter braid than the one that was just like um, three over three over three. And then in the book also, this is explored like what happens when you put reverse stockinette in the space between the braids. And then what happens if you put a double yarn over in the space between the braid. And those are both in there as well. Yeah. Wow. And then the one all the way to the right-hand side. So on the right, that one's like a giant yeah. big rope where you – I can't remember how many. It's like uh, 10 over 10. I don't want to count right now, but, <laughs> and there are uh, several variations of this. Like, you know, we actually saw one in the last slide where there was a little braid in the center, and there's one where there's some garter. This one is a little bit of lace in the center, um, but you'll have the same. It's like stockinette, lace, and stockinette crosses over stockinette, lace, and stockinette. Yeah, and you know, and with that edge stitch on this um, swatch, it's like, oh, I could see that as a panel. I mean, even with the edge using the edge stitch because it, right. I, it, yeah, it almost feels like it's sort of mimicking the texture in the middle of the, of the um, twisting sections, which is well, really, really if you, pretty. If you end up designing with it, then feel free to, to pull oh, in all the texture, you know, because that happens to me too. I'll be swatching away and I didn't really want these two things next to each other, but then I see, oh, that they are really nice next to each other. And then I work from there. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that would be a really nice, um, panel is very very pretty with those edge stitches. So um, and I pulled just uh, a few of the projects to um, share with people and kind of uh, they're from the different sections. But it also what I loved about this is especially people who haven't done a lot of cable work or who would feel intimidated by doing you know like a tradition what we consider you know more of that sort of traditional Aaron you know, how many braids can you put in a single sweater up the neck, down the arms, on the, right. on the back, you know, it's like, there's right. kind of no break. It's a, it's a, you gotta, your brain works all the time. Um, is if you're, if you're, if you want to just, just use a little bit of cable and what a dramatic difference it makes, you know, cause if you picture this, this, um, this open cardigan without the braid on it, it's, I mean, it's a really beautiful sweater, the way it's constructed. And then you add this little bit of braid and it makes it so special. And yeah, Sharon, Shannon says she loves this one. It really makes a statement. And Mary S. says it's it's so lovely. And I just, it's really, really pretty. Tell us about this design. So this one is knit from the top down. You, you start by casting on for the cable and knit some of the back neck and then pick up and knit the other part of the back neck and then the whole thing's joined. But um, the major thing about actually all the items in the book is that it can be knit exactly as 
is, and that's the instructions are written for that. But then I give a system of how to put a different cable in and little advice like this one is really a great one to substitute cables because it doesn't even have to be that width it could be slightly wider because it's just on the edge there and it's a little hard to see um, but for those of you who will have the picture like right under her arm the cable is where the cable stops um, so it forms like a little collar but you could put a wider cable on there you just have to cast on the number of stitches you need for the wider cable and make it your own kind of a sweater. Yeah, because it's not going to impact the fit, which is kind of, right. yeah, the brilliant idea behind that. Yeah, but Kate there's a whole system on how it doesn't impact the fit as well. Yeah. So we'll talk about that with the next one. Yeah, and, and Kate says it's such a beautiful detail, which I agree. And even just the, the stitches along the side that kind of draw your eye to the middle. And this is, this is such a beautiful, beautiful piece. And that yarn looks so, like, scrumptious. Do you remember what you knit this in? Yep, that's Barocco Maya. And it's cotton with some baby alpaca, but just enough to, like, keep it really soft and, and take away some of the qualities about cotton we don't like. And so you have the <laughs> best of the cotton and the best of the alpaca together. Yeah, and just in a, in a gorgeous color, too. And it's, that color is flattering on just about everyone. So that is really pretty. And then this one, I, and I have to admit, I am a total sucker for side-to-side -side cables. <laughs> and um, the second project I knitted with cables was also uh, was on the cover of Vogue Knitting, and it was side-to-side, -side and it was heavily cabled, and um, but with long sleeves. And I saw this, and it just, you know, for people who like to to really push themselves and do kind of a sampler of mm -hmm. cables, but not with you know, like crazy up the sleeve and, you know, collar type stuff that you sometimes find in uh, heavily cabled sweaters. And also great if you live in a place where you, you know, cold is like 40 degrees. So right. yeah, or, you know, or even to wear indoors because, um, you know, sometimes we put our air conditioning up way too high if you live in the South. So in the spring and fall, you end up wearing sweaters at work. So, so tell us about, this one now are these all horseshoe and braids and ropes the you picked ones from the first chapter I think those are both from the first chapter yeah. so they included things that had been done so far in the book like if you picked one from chapter four then anything from two three and four could be in that yeah and this one is um, in chapter two it was a chapter two Is it in project. Chapter two? Yeah, this was a chapter two project. So all of these stitches oh, yeah, then yeah. Will, so yeah. will be in the stitch dictionary section from chapter two right. then, right? But yeah. that doesn't mean like if you want to substitute cables, you don't have to be stuck on chapter two. It was just the best place for me to introduce this particular garment. And the cables that I used are in chapter two. But you could use um, cables from other chapters, like especially chapter three as well. So the construction on this starts on the sleeve um, and it goes straight so you never have to do any increasing or decreasing in the cable. Um, there's a little uh, jut out <laughs> that folds over to become a gusset under the arm and then you cast on for the sides and so you work it all in one piece that way. Wow, really nice. Yeah, and Shannon says, wow, beautiful, a sampler of cables, which yeah, I mean, how could you not love it? <laughs> so, yeah, re really, really beautiful. And do you have any tips on choosing yarns that really um, make the cables pop as opposed to kind of getting lost in the yarn itself? Yeah, that's a little tricky because some – I'm going to start out by saying that multiply really round, smooth, not heathered, not – Tweedy are the absolute best, and this particular yarn is that. But there are loads of yarns that are Tweedy and are heathery that make great cables, so it's worth like trying them out. But certain cables will pop and certain cables won't. But this one is multiply, very smooth. It's a silk alpaca and wool blend that really shows cables. Yeah, and I think in, the swatching thing is so so critical, especially, I think, I mean, it's always critical in, for fit, but even if you're doing a project yeah. where the fit becomes, is less important, is to, because tension is going to make such a huge difference yeah. when you're 
and your tension yeah. when you are crossing stitches is plus this one you do not want this too stiff like this is a nice drapey yarn it's not super drapey but it it's just drapes a little and if you had a really tight tension if you were using a yarn that shouldn't be knit that tight that it was like a board like you should be out on a fishing boat <laughs> this <laughs> isn't the sweater for that because it will be too stiff yeah Very, so pretty so um and then the next section adding breadth is this where we're working wider now we're working a little wider and two particular new kinds of crosses are introduced there that you may or may not have seen before that make for some interesting cables. Um, but everything in it is a little bit bigger. Yeah, and for me, big cables. I love big cables. So as opposed to tight little twists, I love big cables or like all over cables. I think my favorite is probably pie, pie crust lattice. I just which is, you know, like the one in the middle here on this slide uh, where you get all that crisscross back and forth. Although, you know, you do, you really cannot be drinking at all when you're working it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if, if my old knitting group used to meet in a bar and I have to say, I would not, I would not work those cables <laughs> while I was. I, don't know. I think you could drink, but you have to have good light. <laughs> oh well maybe that's the trick is I was because we were in a bar and it it really wasn't that bright in right in there so maybe that was the problem and maybe it wasn't the alcohol so yeah. um so these are samples from the chapter three the adding um breadth and can you kind of can you talk about the um the cables in on this slide oh I'll try to <laughs> let's see the one on the left um, is one, um, I didn't study which ones you were going to put ah. up, I wasn't thinking about, but um, this is one where like ropes cross over ropes obviously, and I think it uses the technique where there are some central stitches that stay, I mean, you can see I'm pointing at it, which is yeah. really good. Cool. Okay. Oh, I do it all the but time, it's okay. The stitches that are central, like a reverse stockinette, they stay in the center because you cable in a certain way. And then that same technique is used in the center, except in, in the center one, instead of the stitches that stay in the center, instead of them being reverse stockinette, they're that little twisted knit stitch that goes up through the center of each cable. Yeah, that's then, so pretty. Yeah. The one on the right is is like second technique, which I call stitch sharing. And usually in a lattice, like the one in the center, if stitches have gone over the top of a lattice, they go under the bottom of the next time it crosses. But in this case, they can go over the top, and part of it goes straight up, and part of it goes over to join the next cable over. And this one, you have to look in the book. This one is on the right is magical because this looks complicated. This looks, maybe, as if you had crossed this every right side row, but this is a cable where you make a big cable cross and you go like five rows straight or seven rows straight and then make a little cable cross and then you go three more rows straight and you make a big one. So you have all these resting rows where you're just doing ribbing and then you make a cable. Um, and we like resting rows. Resting rows, loads of resting rows. So it's it's actually relaxing, <laughs> honestly. It's yeah, relaxing. and I I love cables where they're part of like a, of a ribbing. I think that's I think they're just really beautiful. And I love sweaters where it starts in ribbing and the cables come out of the ribbing, which I think mm. is really pretty. Although I will say I make myself a little nuts when I'm doing it, designing it for myself, to like to swatch to figure out how many stitches I have to increase to accommodate the cable and still keep my ribbing flat because I'm one of those right. people. So is right. there a trick to that or am I just going to have to swatch like everybody else? If maybe you have to swatch like everybody else. The trick in this book is I've told you how wide every cable is in stockinette stitches. So you would look up a cable and, and say the bottom, I don't know what the one in the bottom right is, but say it's 27. So it may be 42 stitches wide, but I tell you that it would take up the same room as 27 stockinette stitches. Oh, yay. And that means that you can like substitute really easily, yeah. but you still have to decide ribbing-wise. Like how, I, for ribbing, I use something like 15, 20% more ribbing Depends what you're doing. You might use the same or, or less. But I would base the ribbing on the stockinette 
and then go on from there. Yeah. So it's a little math, which is no problem for you. Since you have a but I reduced the math for everybody by we, giving you yeah, this document equivalent thing. Yeah, we appreciate that. So, yeah, and Jenny says, don't talk to me while I cross this one. It looks ambitious for her, but step by step. No, it's not. Know? It's, yeah. like, so much easier than you think. Honestly, honestly. And I think that's the thing about cable knitting, and I think it's the same thing about color knitting, which is maybe why I love Fair Isle so much, is, I mean, it really, the finished product, project is, looks so advanced and complicated to people who don't knit, and even people who haven't knit cables or knit, knit, knit color work, but it is, it is surprisingly simple kind of once you get the rhythm down. So, yeah, so I think don't, so Jeannie, Jeannie, don't be, don't be scared off. I think right. you should try this like right now. You, you're <laughs> going to think it's like magical. Like you can't believe that, especially yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pretty. And yeah, Shannon says these are outstanding and Shannon. Yeah. Susan says it's magical, which I agree is, you know, this, th there's over 150 cables in here. So if you can't find a cable that you can't wait to knit in this book, then you should probably not be knitting cables because <laughs> there's something for everyone in here. You know, whether you like like big floppy cables or like you like the like crazy, let's go ahead and cross on every row kind of cables. There's right. something in here for everybody. So, and then just for, uh, for a couple of projects in, in Florida, this is a winter coat. So, right. but I actually did, I did knit a big, uh, leaf cable out of that giant chunky alpaca and and I had to give it away because it was like way too hot for Florida but this is such a statement piece and I really love the extra long fringe on the end is really something so um t so tell us about about this one so first of all the stitch that we just talked about <laughs> about it being magical and easier than it is that's what this scarf is. So you can see how it makes a point on the bottom, and then you repeat the top like 24 rows over and over. And notice that on the right, that's the right side of the fabric, and on the left, it's gotten turned over on purpose so that we could see the wrong side of the fabric. And it looks amazingly good. Like it looks as almost as good as the right side. So it's a perfect choice for a scarf. Yeah, and I know there are, there are little pullouts in the book, callouts in the book that show you the backs of some of the cable patterns too because right. although they're not technically reversible in the sense that they're the same on both sides, but they don't have ugly floppy backsides, which we all want to avoid, right. and that they, they still look good on the back. So, And I think a lot of people avoid cables on scarves for specifically that reason. Right. But they're just choosing, choosing the wrong cables. Yeah. So project, I went so. through the book. I went through the swatches and I turned every single one over. And I think every one that I liked the back of um, pretty much, sometimes there'd be like three in a row that'd be pretty much the same on the back. But, but most of the ones that I really liked are in those call outs. And they're like reversible for different reasons. Like sometimes there was some reverse stockinette on the front and it made a really interesting pattern on the back and looked completely different. And sometimes when the cables were based in rib, that's a pretty good chance it's going to look good on the other side. And, um, and then if it had lace, it was going to look good on the other side a lot of the time too. Yeah, yeah, so pretty. Susan says she loves the depth of the cables, which I agree. So, and then this is kind of, you know, for people who don't want to knit a all over cable sweater, I think the sweaters that have the beautiful panels up the front and then kind of give you that stockinette break on the other sections, I think are, um, are really great projects where you kind of don't have to think a hundred percent of the time. Right. Yeah. yeah, this is really pretty. I love the neckline on this sweater. I think it's just really flattering. It's just a little bit wider. It kind of shows a little collarbone, which I think, and it just has a really feminine shape to it. So there are a couple things about this one. <coughs> Excuse me. I um I was trying to make it as easy as possible. So you just have the cabling down the front, no increases, decreasing anything. Actually, that's true for almost all the cables, but for this one especially. Um, and 
I personally find it um, hard when you're starting from the top down and you have to set up all these different things like different shaping and short rows and so this just casts on at the neckline you set up the pattern and go and the increases are in rounds like you were knitting a lopey kind of sweater yeah and the neckline is done last which means you really have control over it and you could rip it out and do it again if it wasn't perfect or and they're short rows in the finishing so that you can bring the back neck up some and that's why you can see like a little wedge shape over to each side that's yeah. where um, the, you really see the short rows. Yeah, I can't stand when my sweater feels like it's trying to pull off on my back because the back is a little bit too low. It drives me nuts and it ends up in a drawer and it's never taken out. So yeah, and Savannah Gal says that she thinks this is beautiful and great for a beginning cabler and Mary S is completely inspired, which right. Yeah. Oh, nice. And then Jeannie says the gray sweater is beautiful, and it's exactly what she's been looking for. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and well, then she had asked if there was a design in the back, but the back is stuck no. in that, right? You, but if you wanted to put a design on the back, um, actually, I wouldn't recommend it. I was going to say you could, <laughs> but because of the way the decreases are really spread out beautifully all the way around from, from front to front, you, you shouldn't put it on the back. You should just keep it up the front. Yeah, give yourself now, a break. I, you have permission from Nora Gowan to give yourself you know, a break on the back. Oh, not to correct you too much, but it's gone. Nora gone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I I had an event in a shop one time, if I can tell this story. Oh, and it was an event from like 12 to, to 2, and at like 1 something, most people had gone away, and we were just sitting around eating, and, and a woman came in, and she said, is Nora Gauguin here? Oh, and I just God. shouted out, gone. And she said, well, I was told she would be here oh, to tell how, you. How funny. And anyway, then we all burst into, like, complete laughter. And, and oh she had God. a great sense of humor about it, too. Anyway, yes. <laughs> it's like Vaughn, only with a G. Oh, well, there you go. Anyway. But at least I didn't say go Gan, so I'm ahead of the game. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I just That's right. I have a, my last name is Moriarty. I got no place to – I have no place <laughs> to talk about on that. So, um. All right, so um, now expanding cables are, um, so we've gone wider, and now yep. what are we doing? Now we're going even wider, and there are, there are a couple things that happen in this chapter. Some things are just big, like the one in the middle here, um, and some things, most of in, things in the chapter are repeatable. So on the left and the right, there's a repeat that you could go over and over, and the stitch could be as wide as you wanted it. Um, so the one on the left is something we haven't seen before at all, and it's just a pattern I liked. And the one on the right, we had a single um, column of that shown in chapter three, and now this is the expansion of it. Yeah, and you know, this is like for people who go whole whole hog. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, who who are who think a lot. Although the one in the middle, you know, it's the same thing. You get that sort of just that pattern in a wide um in a wide panel. Right. But I've seen so many beautiful designs where they even do like a wide panel of this repeating design like we see on the right hand side where right. you have a whole section or even the front of the sweater in the back is, you know, simple because, you know, at some point you have to, like, take a breath <laughs> So okay. when you're so, when you're doing this. Beth, you would really like the one on the right because it's totally rib based. So you would just start with rib and then start in with a cable when you wanted to. You could do four inches of rib, six inches of rib, whatever, and it just becomes the pattern. So if you like looked at that first row, that would be your ribbing, and you would just keep going. Yeah. And honestly, this is one of those where you do a row that has cables, three rows straight, no cables, no nothing, and then another cable row. And it goes on like that. So it has a lot of resting rows. Yeah, resting rows are good. And yeah, Susan says she loves the one on the left. Patty says these are fabulous. Shannon loves the one on the left as well. And I think it's it's those little like per, it almost like little pearls that kind of break up that, you know, just the stockinette kind of rope and the elongated rope. So you you get a very I don't know, there's something very like re relaxed and soothing in the repetition of that particular um cable it's uh 
It's just, it's very different. It's kind of a, it's very modern looking to me. Oh yeah. Susan says it's like Lily of the Valley, which I totally, I totally see that in that. (laughs) Yeah. I got to figure out what I'm going to put that on because I, I don't, there's just, there's just something fresh and modern in that cable. That I just, like what it does when it repeats like that. Like it didn't get put in one of the chapters where it was just a column, and obviously it could have. But I really like it when there are several of them together. Yeah, like, and they're like they're offset, so you get the one right. the little um, the little pearl pearls and the little and then the plain stockinette. It's 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 there's yeah there's like a rhythm to it. It's like ocean waves, right? That's just very soothing when you look at it. So, yeah, and Savannah Gal says that the one on the right reminds her of vintage wrought iron, which I totally see mm. that. Yeah, very pretty, very pretty. So, and then there's a there's a little um thing about the progression of knot cables, which actually this is a I got a I got a preview version of the book before all of the corrections were done. So, um <laughs> so yes, I do see that extra o there. Um so, uh, so this little, this, cause there's all these call outs in the book about, um, kind of, it's like a tips and tricks and kind of an interesting, interesting bits about, um, cables. And this, this was a call out about how not cable, not cables, cables, not cables, not as not and OT it's cables. O not, no, the O is supposed to be there. The o oh, is, is it? Oh, I thought. Oh, that's a. I thought it was a typo. O? No, 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 oh, no, no. They're all o, is there O shaped knot? I called it. I mean, you you can call on my um my naming is a little odd, <laughs> but but these are called. It's the progression of O knot cables. So like the one on the left is O knot lattice. And the oh, one in the middle I is O knot singles. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So because there's an O and there's a knot. Yeah, so these are um, basically the same cable pattern, but how they're used differently to create a... Well, I don't really think of it that way. I yeah. Think of it, this, this is describing how one cable pattern became another cable pattern. Mm-hmm. And I did this several times in the book. I was trying to let people into my head. So <laughs> if, if you're going to design <laughs> cables, like maybe this will help you. But for everybody else, it's more like, People say they want into my head and they want it like they don't want to get the painful parts. But, yeah, <laughs> but they don't want the so scary stuff. They don't want the scary stuff. But this is a little view in. So in this case, like I the stitch on the left came first. And I can't really tell you why, but it did. It's the one that came first, the look real close lattice one. And then I was thinking, well, what happens if you kind of pull it's really three columns. What happens if you pull them apart? And that's what's in the middle. It becomes the three separate columns of O's and knots, and you could use um, one column separately. You could definitely like pluck that out and use it by itself. And then I went back to the original and I looked at it and I realized that if you carved bits out of it, if you yeah. carved like little triangles out of the side, um, that you would get the one on the right. And this is like, I thought it was cool on graph paper, but I was really happy with the way it came out once knit. And things like this that are a surprise to me are a particular joy. It's like, I knew it would be nice, but oh, I really like it. Yeah, and it's Susan says theme and variation. I think Susan right. must be a musician. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just so so pretty. Yeah, and I do like those single columns. And I'm thinking, oh, that'd be beautiful just up the outside of a sleeve or something. Right. Really, Use it really that way. Pretty. Yeah, and Mary Alice says she just she loves the third one. I think that's so interesting to watch it like come in and then go out and come in and go out. And uh, so I've I've made a second sample of the sweater that we saw a couple back, the the top down one with just the panel down the front. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my second second sample in my size so that other people can try it on. Yeah, that one. And I've used the cable that was on the right, the one that goes in and in out. And out. Yeah, um, right down the center. It fit really nicely down the center. Oh, well, there you go. So I'll have to blog oh, about this it. one. Yeah, very nice. And so, and here's one of the projects in here that kind of pulls um, the different different kinds of cables together into right. a nice snuggly wrap that has tons of texture, which is really pretty. So I love I love how you use the different cable on the edge to kind of give it that tighter finish and then the looser cabling through the middle. It's just so pretty. 
Thanks. So it's so pretty. So I I suspect you'll be seeing this on people this winter. If you go to if you go to like Vogue knitting or something, you'll be seeing. Is that like cool to see people wearing your stuff though? It is. And of course, it especially happens at places like that, like yeah. at big knitting events. Yeah. yeah, where people are showing off their projects by wearing, right. actually wearing them. So yeah, and Shannon says she's going to, she's got to make that wrap. So, yeah. ne so Shannon, next time you come, you have to turn your video camera on and we'll see it. Probably right. not the next time, but maybe like. The time. <laughs> oh yeah, next week. Yeah, <laughs> next, yeah, next week. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, because um, Melissa, um, Labar and Cecily Glowick McDonald are coming to talk about weekend wraps. So I'm sure you'll have it done by then. <laughs> right? So you can, next week, you're, you're good. We're all, we're all good. And so, oh, so this section was the finding motifs, which mm -hmm. I thought was really beautiful because I don't think, you know, we, when we think about cables so much, I think we think of them like in a group kind of, you know, like doing their thing, like my pie crust lattice cables and stuff, and that you don't really think about how, you know, especially like the second from the, from the right, you know, is how cables can be used to create like individual designs. And I, cause I thought this was like, when I looked at that, I thought that is so crazy beautiful, you know, with that combination of lace and a really non-traditional kind of use of cables is um, is I never really think about cables as motifs. So tell us about this section of the book. So there's kind of a, a double meaning here in a way because there's one tiny little motif that you can see, especially if you look on the left, how it's like this little twisted cable. It actually takes four um, four turns to make that little motif on the left that's used over and over again. How you can use that in all sorts of different ways. Like you can see it, you can see that same little twisted motif in the bigger motif that's second from the left. And you can see it in the one that you just talked about with the lace in the middle. It's those little motifs that kind of made up the circle. And then there's a completely different kind of motif on the one on the right. So it's it's about like looking at something that's already made and seeing a bigger motif from it and about adding these little motifs together. And yeah. there's, a, there's a call out in there that you guys are going to want to look at that tells you how um, number 110 that's there on the left had several iterations, like we just saw the... Um, the variations on a theme, it became the one that's second to the left, the one that, that I call Weeping Blossom. So you see everything in between and how it, uh, how one became the other and how I was not aiming for this thing that's a Weeping Blossom at all. It came about because I had variation and then this variation and then what if I do this to it and what if I do that to it and suddenly this very structured cable becomes this very open flowery cable. Yeah, and, and that's like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and Susan says the one with the open work, the second one from the right is stunning. And you know, I look at that and I think, oh, I mean, just to put that on the outside of the calf on a simple sock, or something, you know, how that just, it's just that little bit of cable work can really, really transform something that would ordinarily be just, you know, simple and plain and plain Jane, you know. And so, and Shannon was asking about how you come up with, with all of these. And I mean, your brain just it must work. Do, it's the progression that, that we've been talking about. Um, I don't often have the, the finished goal in mind. It was progressing one to the other. And that happens at two times. Like once, it happens when I'm working on my computer, or years ago it would be on graph paper, but it happens when I'm working on my computer on the graph, and if I'm knitting it and suddenly, like, you know, I'm in that relaxed mood and I can see what else that would do. Like what if you mirror imaged it, or what if you added lace inside, or that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think the kind of this the story, you know, the kind of the background story that you tell in Knitting Nature, um, one of my favorite books is, um, you know, is really kind of that whole, well, what if, you know, and that when you when you look at something, you see you see shapes and progressions, and it's um, 
and and I think that's what we're look we're looking at here is that right. it's the well what if I did this and what if I did that and and it's really um you know thank you thank you for that because for those of us who would just like to relax and knit <laughs> <laughs> you know the the what if has been done <laughs> for us right. you know if you're if you just want to if because there's so much to choose from in this book and I think that's you know that that's the thing is you've what ifed you know, for all of us, which, um, which I really uh, appreciate. And there's some, there's some really interesting projects in this, this section of the book as well. Because when I looked at this, I thought, damn, I would never, ever have thought of doing cabling, like up the raglan sections in the sleeve of a, of a sweater. And this has that like open work and cabling. And I mean, it takes a basic shape and it makes it, I mean, this is really crazy beautiful. This is so pretty. So this one's from the top down as well. And that's why the, the lace, those are the increases as you go down. And I wanted a rectangle that I could put cables in. So again, like you're not worrying about shaping in it at all. So it's like a raglan, but it's expanded a lot. That's a pretty wide piece across there. It's like 78 stitches, something like that, that just goes straight. So it, um, when she lifts her arms, it's a little more like a bat wing sweater. That's why it's named <laughs> bat wing pullover. Um, but so there are a lot of other cables you could put in there. And this is a very soft and pliable fabric in the Quince Piper. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love snuggly. So yeah, this is really, this is really pretty. And it kind of, you know, you have because of where the cables are, I mean, you have that raglan look to it, but where it it drops so much lower over the bust before the the stockinette section start, yeah. it's so just it's not just your bust popping out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. I am, you know, not tall and thin. I'm neither tall nor thin. So I'm sure I'm thinking about myself a lot of the time when I'm designing. Yeah, you know, there's so many so many sweaters that really um, kind of almost like have arrows pointing at your breasts. <laughs> right. <laughs> That um yeah. yeah I mean and 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 honestly if you if you have any if you have any chest that it can be a little um yeah um disturbing <laughs> so yeah so yeah thank you thank you for thank you for thinking of girls who actually you know have chests and especially those of us who are a little older and whose chests might not be the same place where they were <laughs> thirty were. thirty years ago right so. I appreciate that. Um, I thought this was such an interesting piece and with the beautiful cabling and the edging on it and, you know, really kind of a toss on over everything and just elevate your look kind of piece and, um, and a really great gift knit because the fit is become it doesn't have to fit right it's it, it's like it'll it'll fit anybody you don't have to worry about how long their arms are or how long they are from their shoulders to their hips and so um tell us about this project it's so pretty um it's practically a big square it's like a big square <laughs> with with a neck <laughs> in it um and you know the the cables up the center are in a big rectangle as well. And I've stopped the cable and put garter stitch in so um, that it makes the neckline like really easy to do. You're not working into the cable and making decisions that might be really hard to make and really hard to make it stay pretty um, if you're working this cable or a different cable. Um, this cable really needed that break so that you didn't have to worry about that. And I have noticed when people try this on that it would be exceptionally nice, I kind of wish I had, put um, just a button or fastened it right under the arm so it's like halfway in between sweater and um, and poncho. Yeah, and it'll keep it from moving around as much. Yeah, it wow. wasn't flopping around for people and they were more comfortable. If You could just tack it and or you could sew a button on and, you know, forget the buttonhole, just sew the button on through all layers. Yeah. That would be my advice. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so we have lots of comments on this one. So Savannah Gal says, yeah, capes and ponchos are so hot right now, which you see them everywhere. And she thinks this is super cute and would be a quick knit. And she likes it. So Shannon wants to know, is there a cable on the back as well? The back is just like the front, except the neck shaping is higher. 
Yeah. Keep yeah. it from sliding off the back there. And yeah. then Jeannie says, oh, here's the edge and no shaping. And she agrees. Right. It's a great, right. This is a great gift project. But I suspect if you knit this for somebody else, you pr you'd probably end up keeping it yourself and giving them a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how close you are to their birthday or, you know, Christmas or Hanukkah. Yeah. But I, I have a sneaking suspicion that once you knit it, you would not want to give it away unless you were knitting a second one. But if it were in a different color, you'd probably still keep it. I would. <laughs> That's just me. You might be nicer than me. So, um, but yeah, I, I would be keeping it. So, and then this last section on drawing and tell us like what you, what you're doing in this chapter here. So by the time we get to this chapter, things are really big and wide, and I wanted to talk about how I think of the lines of cable like lines in drawing. Um, so especially, I think you should go on to the next slide. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. You can see a little more. Um, like the one in the middle, how there's, you can make straight lines, you can make sinuous lines, and then you can fill in with different textures just like you would with colored pencils or putting different textures in a drawing. So everything in this chapter like is a wide panel but has a lot to do with like drawing with other cables. Like the one on the left has a bunch of different cables together that kind of make a composition. But I was especially thinking about the line and the one on the right those roundish lines make like an onion shape. Yeah. It's yeah, and I mean it's it's like it's the magic of knitting. You know, which is really, it's, it's, I mean, really crazy when you think about that you take two sticks and some string and the, when, in, when you combine the different kinds of stitches, how you can create something like this. Right. I mean, it's really, you know, it's, it's really, truly magical. And I was looking at the one on the left and I thought, oh, what a great way to start the middle of a sweater, you know, and how it just kind of grows out and then it widens and it just creates this beautiful beautiful design and I I've, um, I think that one of the patterns in my, in a, my American sock knitting book used uh, used an onion kind of design on it it was inspired by the designer's hometown of Walla Walla Washington which by the way is the <laughs> onion go. capital of the world and um, little known fact unless you're from Walla Walla um, but how you can you can create pictures with cables, which is really, um, it's kind of, it's such an interesting idea is how you, how you can tell a story basically with cables. So pretty. So, and I pulled a couple of um, projects and um, I, I love this. I love those longer, the longer pieces on the hips, which I think is just really, um, really flattering and especially over like a blouse. It's just you know, breaks kind of right. breaks it up, but yeah. And the, um, and the cables on the front of this are really beautiful. So tell us, tell us about this design. Yeah. Shannon says, this is very cool. So the cables that I chose for this one, if you look really carefully, you can see there's like a little paisley shape woven in with, um, Oh you know, yeah, the, 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 I do. And I was there's like a little right here. Problem. Right? Yeah, there's like two on her chest. Yeah, and well, two on her belly. they're a little above her chest. So, but there's yeah, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's so cool. And then there are two other cables off to the side just to to set it off. Yeah. Um, and then what I like about this pattern is um, we can't see the back, but I'll try to describe it. There's a very short normal back with armhole shaping and neck, and and then it's just cut off. And there's a big rectangle that gets sewn, you can see it here in the front, along a shaped edge of the front, right across the back and down the other front. So it looks like something that's really complicated and like, how do you make all that extra fabric? It's just a rectangle. Um, and that's one of those things that I love to do. Yeah. So this is and very flattering. Like a garter across the top, so you're not trying to shape those... That again, like yeah. the poncho was, like you don't have to shape into your cable. And it is, like, this is one that's very flattering on me. So I tend to be a, a bustier, and my hips are kind of normal. They're not um, super slender, um, but kind of normal. And I would wear a blouse like this, or a dress, or just something that stuck out the bottom as well, usually. Yeah. I, you know, if you're really, really hippie, you can avoid this one. Um, but... 
for a lot of us, this is like really flattering shape. Yeah, it's just it's so pretty, and uh, and the fact that you get a, you get the easy knitting sections as well is oh everything's is some, easy yeah. except the that front piece. Everything else is like really basic and easy. Yeah, and I tend to look for patterns like that because you know if they get if it's if it's work all the time, it's harder for me, you know, to pick it up and like keep at it. I tend to lose. I tend to I tend to think, oh God, I just bit off more than I really want to chew. <laughs> if it gets too complicated, the the sleeves, the upper back, the the lower back, those can be your like TV knitting, and yeah. then you only have the front as your concentration knitting. Yeah, which I appreciate that. And Shannon said it's a modern take on cable. She's going to have to make this one too, and I do. I think this is such a modern way. Um, to use, tr you know, a traditional cabling technique. It's just, it's really pretty. And then this one I thought just so perfectly illustrates the idea of kind of creating a picture with your cables. Because when I looked at this, I thought, damn, there's like lace, there's cables, there's, there, I see, and it could be because I'm in the mountains of North Carolina for another 10 right. days, I see a deer on the on her upper chest. I mean, it was like right, yeah. And I love so, I love that lacy section like across the top. I just think that is so beautiful. Tell us about this design. Yeah, and Savannah Gal says this is so unusual and interesting. So it started out really looking at stuff that was in fashion right now. Like I love to look over Pinterest and <clears throat> and there were things that had a lot of like straight lines and then sinuous lines together and so I started playing with all those things and the chart did look a bit like a deer but I was like well I, I like it I'll just do it and then when I was finished um, I ended up calling it fennec because I thought that the thing on the front ended up looking like a fennec fox. Oh. You know. yep, and it's got the technique of the the motif you liked way earlier that had the open work in the center. Yeah. So the neckline and the sort of fox end part have that. Um, so there's there is a lot of complication in that panel, but the rest of the sweater is totally basic. The back has some ribbing on it and some reverse stockinette, but doesn't have the cable. You could you could do it. Um, but in this case, I chose to just do something related on the back. Yeah, and I love how just the cable separates and it edges, it like trims out that lacy section right below the neck. I I have not seen cables used to do that before, and it's, you know, it's it's really, really, it's really pretty. And yeah, Susan says, wow, she would, they would not be getting bored working this pattern. No, be great. she didn't get bored. <laughs> no, and I mean, because I think just watching it, watching it come to, you know, come together as you're knitting. And that's, you know, it's kind of like using, yeah. using self-striping yarn. It's like, oh, what comes next kind of thing. Exactly. As, it keeps yeah. you up for more hours, like doing to see what will yes, happen Yes, to see what the, to see what it looks like with another inch on it. Right. So yes, it's just so beautiful. And that's just a very small sample for those who are coming back to watch it or people who are here in the room today. That's such a, there's a, such a small sample of what's in the book. It's, um, I wish we had like four hours and we could show you everything because um, you're so going to want want this book. So, but if people are going to want to, you know, um, keep track of you, Nora, in a very <laughs> non-stalkerish way, you know, but, but for people who want to, oh yeah, so yeah, and Susan says, fabulous book, congratulations, which, yeah, this Thanks. is, this is definitely a, a go-to um, book and that there's actually an e-book uh, a Kindle version of this book available as well for people like me who like to take their whole library with them when they travel, mm. but don't have that option <laughs> or enough suitcases <laughs> or enough, you know, enough luggage allowance to be able to be able to do that. So, um, so first you can, you can uh, see what's up with Nora uh, at noragowan.net. And there's actually some more um, pages from the book where you can see like this beautiful, hats and um and then also uh, you can um, um shop Nora's patterns as well there um you can oh and Patty says she's learned so much in the past hour she's looking 
forward to see how much more she can look. Oh my gosh, there's so much, there's so much love in this room right now for you. And um, Kate says, beautiful book. Jeannie says, thank you. And Shannon says, well done. And thank you for sharing from Kate M. And yeah, so this is, yeah, this, it's really beautiful. So anyway, so that's where you can find Nora at noragon.net, noragon.net. And then you can also, uh, if you're on Facebook, you can check out her designer page, which 846 designs kind of just makes me really. That's the Ravelry page, right? Yeah, yeah. the Ravelry page is crazy. And then um, also uh, Nora is part of the design team at Brooklyn Tweed, Jared um, Flood's yarn uh, company there. And so she has a designer page here um, where you can see um, all the crazy ways that she uses <laughs> math to make life more beautiful for knitters and those they knit for. So um, so you can check that out at Brooklyn, uh, brooklyntweed.com. Uh, if you want to see what inspires Nora, you can follow her on Instagram. And this is like, this is one crazy, beautiful cable here. You're working in that kind of shot. That's one of the yarn. second samples that I'm making of the top down pullover. And that one's in Jill Draper Make Stuff. Yeah, that is really pretty. And I see that that color is so popular now. So mm. you can also uh, follow Nora on Facebook, Nora Gone, Gone Independent, and also on Pinterest, which I love Pinterest because you can see what people love here. And so like color boards and things that you just things. You can see stuff from my childhood. Yeah, <laughs> you can see things what that I love interest you and inspire you. So that's always really uh, interesting uh, to me. I love to see what inspires um, designers. And also, uh, Nora, you can see her other books um, on um, Amazon. There's Knitting Nature. We were just talking about that. And then, um, of course, we always encourage everyone, well, if you don't win a book in today's event, but um, you will have another chance uh, starting tomorrow to win a copy through Planet Pearl's Facebook page, compliments of the publisher they're really nice they keep us stocked with free stuff which you know it's our favorite stuff as we're netters we love free stuff but uh, call your local yarn store and if they don't have it uh, a ask them why not and um, b if you just need to have it uh, you have prime delivery and you just need to have it in two days um, you can go to planet burl and uh, click on books you'll see it it's the first one up here and if you click on it, you'll see um, you, there's a link there that you can purchase the book and uh, also help support Planet Pearl and pay for things like go to meetings so that we can have these great author events. Um, and of course, don't forget to head over if you're watching this on YouTube within the next three days, head over to um, to uh, Planet Pearl's Facebook page and have a chance to also win another copy. So Nora, I know you're just sitting around doing nothing <laughs> because that's oh, your yeah. favorite thing to do, eating bonbons and uh, watching uh, The Real Housewives. So, um, so are you working on anything that we're gonna be looking forward to? Um, well, right now I am traveling so much every weekend, like for the book <laughs> that that I've slowed down a little bit but I've started to publish my first like set of independent patterns like I left Barocco two and a half years ago and I've been doing all these other things like a collection for the fiber company and doing all the Brooklyn Tweed stuff and doing stuff for Vogue Knitting and finally I've gotten to publish a few things you can see those on Ravelry um, there's only one up so far um, and so I'm doing stuff like that, like continuing with Brooklyn Tweed, and there's no big project like this out there yet. I need a little rest before I can do something huge again. <laughs> well, considering this one was kind of at least mentally in the works for 25 years, I think right. you can have a break. I think it's right. okay. I think we would all vote that you can have a break. Right. But as soon as I put this to bed last year, I like thought of more cables. Yeah. So eventually. Well, <laughs> well yay. Fun. So we'll right. so we'll be looking for volume two, right? Someday, but don't someday. yeah. 
so don't bank on that one yet. Exactly. Yeah. So it was it was such a pleasure to have you on. I am such a huge fan, and I, I'm tickled that you took time out of your day to um, come and chat with us. I'm going to ask the people in the room to stick around because we're about to give away a book. And uh, and thanks again, Nora. It it's been a uh, it, it's been an honor and a pleasure, as always, to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone who was listening. All right.